Welcome to the Fundamentals of Shaft Alignment from Equip Incorporated. Hello, I'm Damian Josephsberg. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. This presentation is not meant to make you an expert in alignment, but to take you through the basic steps to perform the proper alignment and some common pitfalls to watch out for. At the end of this presentation, you will be given some information on how Equip can help you with shaft alignments in your facility. Safety is our number one concern no matter what we do nowadays. And this certainly applies to shaft alignment. So before we begin any alignment, we have to make sure that we have all the safety equipment necessary and that we follow the safety procedures that are in place. We certainly need to make sure that all equipment is locked out and tagged out before we begin any alignment. The next step in an alignment is to clean up. The 30 minutes you spend cleaning up before you begin an alignment will save you an hour to an hour and a half on the other end. So we have to get out our wire brushes and our solvents and remove all the dirt and grease from the base plate, from underneath the machine, and from around the surrounding areas. This is going to help us during the alignment to not get an erroneous result and make incorrect feet corrections. Then we have to inspect the shims to make sure that they are cleaned off and if there are any rusty shims we should throw them out and replace them. Lastly, we should check for any foreign objects. Sometimes there may be a nut or bolt or something underneath the machine that will prevent you from making necessary moves. So you should either look underneath the machine or sweep a stick underneath the machine and make sure that we get everything out of our way. Cleaning up is going to save us time in the long run. The next thing that we are going to do is perform a rough saw foot check. Now what this involves is keeping all the hold down bolts loose and just letting the machine sit as it wants without putting any other pressure on it. Now we look at all of the shim points to see if there are any obvious gaps that are in between the machine feet and the base. Any of these gaps should be filled with the necessary amount of shim in order to not disturb the machine. Just fill these spaces and don't worry if there is a little bit of angle in the foot to base and that the gap is larger on one side than the other. Just fill it so that you can easily put the shims in. We will fix any of these other pro problems later when we do our final sh saw foot correction. Now we are going to determine our alignment references. We need to decide which machine is going to be the movable machine and which machine is going to be the stationary machine. If we have any other reference material, like we have a computer that we are using to reference the alignment, or we have a standard sheet of paper that we are using to reference the alignment that shows the stationary machine on one side of the sheet and the movable machine on the other side of the sheet, this should be in agreement with our orientation to the machine, or we should account for this as we are doing the alignment. It is important to decide which machine is going to be stationary and which machine is going to be movable because certain conditions determine which machine is stationary. Normally, if you have a pump and a motor, your pump is going to be your stationary machine. It is heavily piped in and it is very difficult to move this machine. So by choosing the pump as a stationary machine, our motor is then going to be our movable machine. It is not that it is so easy to move, but it is more easily moved than the pump. We need to determine the coupling type. There is a rigid coupling, flexible coupling, or a coupling that is going to involve a spacer shaft. The reason we need to determine this is so that we can take any necessary steps that we need to to prepare the couplings to exhibit this misalignment. A rigid coupling will exhibit no misalignment while it is bolted together. So, if we do have a rigid coupling, we have to unbolt the coupling and perform an uncoupled alignment. If there is a flexible coupling, this is no big deal. Almost any alignment tool is going to take accurate measurements across this coupling. For spacer shafts or spacer couplings, we need to see how far the, spa the spacer length is because some alignment tools will not be able to measure across the entire span of the spacer. So we may have to break up the alignment into two separate alignments, taking measurement results at each coupling half. 
So now that we have determined the type of coupling that we have, we can take these necessary steps to prepare the coupling in order to display misalignment and we can move on to the next step in the process. When setting up alignment tools, you have to make sure that you are bracketed to a rigid part of the shaft. In some cases, there is not enough shaft space present in order to bracket to. So if there is a coupling hub, and this coupling hub is keyed to the shaft, that means it is going to rotate with the shaft, and by definition, it is part of the shaft. So it is okay to bracket to this coupling hub. And we could bracket using chain brackets, magnetic brackets, or lots of other various types of brackets that are available to us, so long as it allows the alignment tool to mount rigidly to the shaft. When we set up our alignment tool, we need to make sure that we duplicate the orientation of the setup that is in our reference material. When we are using a computer to reference the alignment, or we're using a standard form to reference the alignment, and it has certain elements of the alignment tool set up on the left or set up on the right, we need to make sure that our alignment setup is oriented in the same way as this reference material. Next, our dimensions are determined. Any alignment tool that you're going to use is going to have certain standards and dimensions that you're going to have to know in order to do any calculations or have the computer do calculations in order to figure out your misalignment at the coupling and any of the feet corrections that have to be performed. So some standard things that always have to be known are the distance of the alignment tool from the coupling. What we mean by coupling is the center of the coupling or the flex plane that we are referencing with that alignment tool. So we need to know that distance in order to calculate any of the misalignment at the coupling. This is really our most important dimension. After that, we are going to need to know the distance from the coupling, front foot, and we are going to need to know the distance from the front foot to the back foot. We are going to need to know this at least on the movable piece of equipment. It is always good to have it just as reference for the stationary piece of equipment, but at the very least, we need to have all of these dimensions for the movable piece of the equipment in the alignment. Taking measurements. If you're performing your alignment with a laser alignment tool, you're going to have some different measurement modes available to you, and determining which one you're going to use depends on a few different things. First of all, is there a lot of vibration in the area? If so, these may affect your alignment readings, and you're going to want to choose a measurement mode that allows you to take more readings in order to average out any of these vibrations. Are your shafts coupled? If not, you are going to have to use a measurement mode that would allow you to take readings on uncoupled shafts. Is one or more of your shafts non-rotatable? If so, then you are going to have to alter your measurement mode in order to allow you to take readings on non-rotatable shafts. After we take our measurements, we can now view our results, and our results are going to be viewed in two different ways. We have our coupling conditions and our feet corrections. Our coupling conditions are actual misalignment displayed at the coupling. This is truly what we are trying to eliminate by performing an alignment. We are trying to get the misalignment exhibited at the coupling to below an acceptable standard or a tolerance that we are using in order to perform our alignment. The feet corrections are what we need to do and to see in order to correct this misalignment that exists at the coupling. Now that we have seen the results, we can perform a rough alignment. A rough alignment is just that. It is one vertical move and one horizontal move in order to get your alignment within a manageable point so that we can perform a final saw foot check that is going to be accurate. We always want to make our vertical move first because any vertical move that we make is going to affect our horizontal move. So we make our vertical move, we take a set of measurements, and then we make a horizontal move. Then we can move on to the next step. We are now going to attempt to eliminate all of the saw foot that exists. 
soft foot is actually machine frame distortion. It is anything that would cause the machine frames to distort. So it doesn't necessarily have to be coming from the feet. It could be caused by pipe strain. When we do have a soft foot condition or machine frame distortion, what it is actually doing is creating an internal misalignment. It is creating a misalignment between the two bearings internal in the machine. And if we don't eliminate this internal misalignment, but we perform an excellent alignment at the coupling, we are still going to have some exhibited effects of misalignment because we haven't gotten rid of this internal misalignment. It is very important to eliminate as much soft foot as you can while performing an alignment. The final alignment is an alignment within an acceptable tolerance. This tolerance can come from your coupling manufacturer, from an in-house specification, from your machine manufacturer, or even from your alignment tool supplier. All this tolerance is, is a window of acceptable misalignment. We need to have this because we can never perform a perfect alignment. So as long as we are in an acceptable window of misalignment, our alignment is finished. Once we have gotten our machines within this acceptable tolerance, we then tighten the hold down bolts and take another set of misalignment readings. We do this to confirm the alignment. Anytime you make a move or you do anything to the machines, you always want to take another set of readings in order to confirm what you have just done. It is important to create some sort of an alignment report when we finish an alignment. For in-house documentation and just to make it easier for the next time someone performs an alignment on this machine. A lot of alignment tools have automatic alignment recording features right in them. Sometimes you could print right out of a tool a text report or a graphical report. Some tools even have software that come with them that allow you to download these files to a computer and sort them there. Sometimes you could even change these files in your computer or create files in your computer and then upload them to your tool for the next time you go to perform an alignment. It is very important even if you are writing on a sheet of paper or creating these reports yourselves to document what you have done, how you left the machine, just for future reference. Why is Equip the best choice for your laser alignment needs? Well at Equip, all we do is alignment. We're experts in the field. We're able to take current technology that's available now and apply it to new problems. We continually think outside of the box to solve problems that are out of the ordinary. We have experienced alignment engineers who are dedicated to your specific alignment needs. We will go almost anywhere at any time without almost any notice. We guarantee your alignment will be done correctly the first time. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. For more information on Equip products and services, you can contact our sales office at 407-401-9343. For any technical questions, you can contact Operations at 305-538-7101. You can always find us on the internet at www.equip.com or you could send us an email at info at equip.com. Remember, at Equip, alignment is our business.